Right, got it. Goff's gone. Where's he gone? As 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 we're just about to start, we've uh, oh, got... someone cut the communication mast in Landwick Major. <laughs> they chopped a bit of a Oh right, there, there he is. There he is. I'm sure I, could... I'm sure, sure I could hear somebody snoring. <laughs> All right, okay. Let, let's let let's get into it. So. We we will we will get the chart up here now, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do this. Don't worry, we won't be showing my bank details today. <laughs> oh yeah, we we'll just just show the email. That's great. Let's just uh, let's get that off. Let's get that off. Let's get that off. Okay. So when when we when we looked at this on when we looked at this on Tuesday, we um, th there was this little chart that we actually went through, and one one of the things one of the things that was very um, prominent on Tuesday uh, was the terminology. What does the terminology mean? Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic, and that that's one thing that I want to explain. The other, the other thing I want to go through is, is the difference between prehistory and history. And the other thing I, I want to go through is, is sort of a potted history of, of where we are with um, the prehistoric genre and, and, and what, all, what all of this means. The one, one, thing, one thing is, as you, as you move between charts, um, and obviously this word Stone Age is, is, is quite, quite important, as you as you move between charts, you you see um, a difference in dates, uh, quite quite prominently, quite prominently, a difference in dates between all the different charts that you might come across. This this is another one, all, all these different um, sort of charts on the internet, and what 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 would be significant to think about um, is again the boundary between prehistory and history. So. As we as we start to slowly get into this, and for the next year, we will be dominated by the prehistoric archaeology of Britain. But we will be visiting places like Switzerland, where we where we do have um, wonderful prehistoric archaeological remains being excavated. We'll be visiting um, even the likes of North America and. Um, dabbling into other areas of prehistory, and one one thing that I was specifically looking at yesterday was a site in northern Iraq. And what what I do on Wednesday is we look at the relationship of 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 space. Uh, we look at the relationship of how people moved around structures and buildings, and one of the three areas that we looked at yesterday was a place known as Shanindar Cave, which is in northern Iraq. And the one thing about Shanindar Cave in northern Iraq is that um, a body, uh, one of two, was found in 1956. And these two bodies that were found in 1956 uh, were intriguing by far. But it was only over the past couple of decades that we've actually realised the importance of the first body, uh, Shanindar One, um, known as Nandi, and um, Shanindar One turned out to be somebody with with acute disability, uh, dating as far back as sixty thousand years ago, and that would put this body sixty thousand years ago in a period that we didn't even mention on Tuesday, known as the Middle Paleolithic, which is in fact in the Stone Age, which is in fact a prehistoric period. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dart dart into this, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say to Jess, can you keep an eye on if if I make you if I make you a, a joint host, can you keep an eye on um, uh, anyone, who comes in? Yeah, yeah, anyone joining us because I, I need to keep the flow on this one. Yeah, no, that's fine, Carl. Let, let's just go back. So so Shannon Darman 
um, was was so fascinating because of the Shannon Dan Man one was 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 so fascinating because of the level of disability that Shannon Dan one had suffered throughout his entire lifetime. And the other thing as well is Shannon Dan Man was not only from this middle Paleolithic period, he was also a Neanderthal. It was also a purebred Neanderthal. One image that I haven't got up on here, which, which, is, which is very, very important, is if you type into, say, any search engine you, you, and you type in the word prehistoric cave. Now, um, if, we, if we dart in and um, there's, there's one in China there, let's just find a typical old prehistoric cave. Um, anyone will do just trying to find a really fascinating one actually um rather interesting one here uh, and this takes us to another point in time as well um uh, this this is a, a prehistoric um cave associated with the um uh with uh, oh hang on oh god hang on let's just go back a minute let's go back um, Le, Le Ban in the island of Flores. Now, the island of Flores itself is actually, this is quite fascinating, the island of Flores itself um, leads us to a, a new a, a type of hominid, uh, which again was a new type of hominid that was, uh, which has only been discovered in the past three decades. Um, uh, one of many hominids, when, when, when we look at prehistory, we think about Neanderthals in regards to Britain, um, and we think about um, Homo sapiens sapiens. Um, in other parts of the world, you have other types of hominids called Denisovians. You have um, Flores Man as well on the island of Flores. Um, and this is a site where the first bones were actually found in Laban Cave. Um, and the, the, one, the one thing about a cave like this, it's, it, it's like that typical prehistoric cave. One of the things about prehistory is that, is that we're, we're quite obsessed with people living in caves in the prehistoric period. It's, it's everywhere. Um, whenever we're taught in school, we always see people brandishing clubs, living in caves uh, with saber-toothed tiger, ty tigers, typical um, Flintstones type stuff, you know, um, and, and, and dinosaurs and all the rest of it. But some of what I've just said is completely wrong. The, the one thing, the one thing, the reason why archaeologists are so obsessed with caves um, in, in ancient prehistory is that's the place where we find the evidence. It's simply the place that we find the evidence. Lascaux itself in France, you've got the beautiful paintings, which we will be looking at sometimes this year. Uh, Altamira Cave, again, another wonderful cave network in Spain. Again, cave, we've got the word cave with, uh, and all this, all these caves with, with wonderful evidence of our prehistoric ancestors. You, you look at um, evidence in Gibraltar and Romania of Neanderthals. You, you look at evidence in China of early hominids as well. And you can look at caves anywhere in prehistory well this is quite a an extreme statement to make uh, you can look at caves anywhere in prehistory and you might find something associated with our ancient ancestors but what you won't find other than flints brandishing around um, is evidence uh, from the prehistoric period in normal open fields uh, particularly when you go back 12 13 14 15 thousand years ago because simply most of the landscape has been completely destroyed due to glaciation. And what glaciation does, it changes a landscape. It rips everything up and it churns everything up and it, it puts it into moraines. Um, and, <laughs> and, and the problem with that is, is that um, when glaciers are destroying the landscape and shaping the landscape and eroding the landscape and river systems are eroding the landscape and they've got extreme flooding, um, that means that any early prehistoric evidence beyond 12,000 years ago has been mainly erased unless you look in cave systems. I, I, I mentioned fleetingly on Tuesday a cave system known as Danarogov. 
Well, we know Dan Rogoff in Brecon and um, and in Dan Rogoff Cave, we, we've got various bits of archaeological evidence. Um, human remains, we, we've got um, archaeological evidence at other cave networks in, in, in Wales, in particularly um, called Pont Newydd Cave, where we've got Neanderthal remains going back in excess of 30,000, 40,000 years ago. We find a lovely cave um, in the um, in the southwest of Britain, Kent's Cavern. Um, we look at some of the earliest evidence in Britain of cave art at Craswell cra Crags and on the Gower. We also look at the early evidence of Cheddar Man. Um, and Cheddar Man itself, um, we, we find the first set of human remains. And if anyone's ever looked at the Cheddar Man evidence in excess of 10,000 years ago, um, um, we've, we've got DNA evidence from um, Cheddar Man and, and Cheddar Man actually links in, uh, the DNA links in with some of the local people within the landscape of Cheddar, which is, which is quite strange. And when, we, when, when, we, when we look at, for example, trying to understand this um, very diverse prehistoric landscape, it's all looking at caves again. Now, it doesn't mean to say, so if we go back to a chart, if we, um, if we click, click onto a chart here, back to one of these charts, uh, which one should I go with? That, that's the one that we're familiar with. So it doesn't mean to say that people didn't live in the fields, and it doesn't mean to say that people didn't wander around in the normal landscape to get from place to A to B. It's just the, just the evidence has been erased. And, and I also mentioned something very, very odd on uh, um, um, Von Daniken type styley. I also mentioned something really, really odd uh, on Tuesday again. So obviously when we, when we teach on Tuesday, it always, it always sets out my store for what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the week and what Jessica's going to be doing for the rest of the week. Um, and that, that stall is, is to sort of um, um, examine um, sort of ex examine all the areas that we're going to actually uh, look at. And you do have massive movement of people. And, and that great weird thing that I mentioned about Von Daniken, do you remember Chariots of Fire and, and all, of, all, those, all those publications from the 1960s, you know, Aliens and all the rest of it? Uh, lots of people from the 1960s have, won, have believed and used, and, and used what I've already said about um, archaeological evidence being erased from the open fields and stuff to actually say that there, that there had been advanced civilizations like civilizations that we've got today, like our civilization. But it was erased by previous glaciations and um, there's little bits of evidence out there, but um, you know, um, there's, there's evidence of, of, of various mechanisms and stuff that existed thousands and thousands of years before modern technology. Uh, but uh, because of glaciation and all the rest of it, all that evidence has been destroyed. But unfortunately we're into the category um, of Planet of the Apes, and that's not something that I that um, um, I signed up to. <laughs> um, and we we have just been we have just been joined by um, everybody in um, in Lanswick Major. So Jessica, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come in I'm gonna come into these uh, in into the gang like a like a like somebody uh, smoking a pack of fags um, in the smokers area. <laughs> uh, there, there are smokers area. So what what we're gonna do? We're gonna stop the screen share in a moment. Welcome to to um, welcome to us today. Um, it was that we we did have we we, we are still aware of. Um, Jessica could be being fined on on a train if she went to Lanford Major today, and um, um, if she didn't have a good excuse to um, be somewhere. So that's at this that's that's at this present moment why why you guys um, are without Jessica in Lanford Major. And I do appreciate uh, because we all appreciate Jim, don't we, Goff? I do appreciate Jim getting the computer. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I don't know, are, are you all there in Lantric Major? Are you all there with the Woolwich? We're, we're, we're all here more than you are. <laughs> yeah, we're all here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Gosh, shall I put him on mute? <laughs> I can't hear you anyway. It's okay, we'll mute yeah, ourselves. No, hang on, don't mute yourselves. 
Don't mute yourselves. We wonder if there's any archaeological news from any of you this week, other than Alice Roberts is uh, looking at Rutland Roman Villa. Is anything want to anyone want to say anything from Lantern Major, i.e. Karen? Anything you want to say? No. Anyone got any news? Well, absolutely no. It's got no, no, no. Now we've got about five million press cuttings here of things, but no. Well, well, why, why, why don't you, why don't you do what we did um, just before Christmas um, in in one of my classes? We we basically said, out of those, out of those fifty um, press cuttings, right? We're gonna we're gonna rely on Kathy for this. What would be the most extraordinary um, set of news that you've come up with in the past um, three weeks, Kathy? Come on, let's chuck it. We want to hear your voice, Kathy, oh, because yeah, particularly Kathy. me and Goff love. Her. <laughs> no, my brain is still mush. Uh, her brain is still mush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, okay. Right. Hang on, okay. she's having a look now. She's having a look through them. Go on, tell us. Oh, oops. I haven't read yet. Because we can't see you on the screen either. No, I, I've switched the camera off because otherwise you'd be looking at a wall. We've got it the wrong way around. Uh, so we've got mass migration from France to the UK occurred 3,000 years ago. Interesting. Uh, that, 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 goes in, that goes in with our prehistoric <laughs> genre. We've we just, we just been doing a little bit of an introduction on prehistory. Um, and I've just been talking about um, one of the things that we do see in prehistory. And that's what we're going to be dominated with over the next um, uh, over the, for the next year um, is that we've got our, we've got archaeological evidence in caves. But for people to move from cave to cave, they would have had to have gone out in the natural landscape hunting and, and, and so on. Um, we don't have uh, archaeological evidence in the main from the open fields, as we do say in, in the Iron Age, right? Because it's all been erased by glaciation. There, there, there is there is evidence for movements of people ac across ac across the uh, pantheon of the planet uh, throughout those periods. It's just that we we can't really find lots of that evidence. But one thing I haven't already said. Um, is even this is this is a key word even though we don't find the evidence of early prehistory in open fields and we find it just in caves is along the coastlines um, of the Australian uh, continent and North America along, along the coastlines under the um, under the uh, low water level um, is that we do see evidence of movements mass movements of people because it's been it's been fossilized on the seabed. But in regards to the land, it's almost been erased. So that's a really good point. I tell you what, what one more article from that pile. Go on, Karen. One more article, Kathy, again. And you guys are quiet as well. It must be because of my, my firm, butch voice and, and, and the way that I look like a pirate. Can I just explain why I wear these bandanas all the time? And I was teaching a young explorers class. Um, and one of the parents said, why isn't Carl teaching you today? Why have you got a pirate teaching you? And... Um, I thought I'd put that in there. Right, I, that's that, nobody felt that, that funny at all. I don't think my humour's lost on you all. Right, anyway, um, right, we've got one. another one. They've de they've mapped the world's oldest family tree from a burial site in the Cotswolds. Yeah, that's DNA because... <laughs> from the bones and teeth of thirty-five people discovered together, nice. buried in a five thousand five hundred-year-old tomb near Cheltenham. Well, it's got to be done, hasn't it? It's got to be done. Have we got any dates of that tomb near Shelton? I've, I've not come across this one at all. Yeah, right. So 27 of those entombed uh, in the Hazelton North Long Cairn, who lived between yeah. 3700 and 3600 BC, belong to five continuous generations from a single extended family. That is absolutely fascinating. And, and actually, not knowing the precise wording of that, right, that may be very, very helpful. Do you know that cutting? It would be wise that we need to put it in a frame. And if I can interpret that cutting um, or want to put the bias into that cutting, um, is, is that what, what, one of the things is that we've always said with Neolithic Britain 5,000, 6,000 years ago is that it was a landscape of families, right? It was a landscape of the sense of families. And then uh, individual families cooperating, working together with other families. This is this is what we see in the Neolithic period at least 6,000 years ago. And then about 5,000 years ago, there's a massive change where it's, it's the sense of the community. 
Um, when we see that, what we see is the sense of the community where we've got the great monuments like Stonehenge, um, the Ring of Brodga, um, and then we start to look at the Clannish Stones in, for example, the Hebrides. And then we look at other monuments around the world that you've got this sense of community bonding together. But before that, you have the sense of the family. And, and if we're talking about um, individual family groups being recognised there in a long con, that's the, that's the last stage of when they were being seen as family groups. And now they're part of the community. They're in a community chamber. And that's where we start to move on. That is a really fascinating article. Not that we're actually going to get to Neolithic um, long barrows in the next six months, but don't worry about it. We, we, we'll probably um, give it a little bit of a mention. And as you're all nice and quiet everywhere, I've now got everybody's complete attention and we, we're going to go with back with that flow. Um, now, we had a little bit of a chart on there. And as you know, I'm so egocentric. I want you to see me on the screen and I want you to just see my wonder and without my unshaven oh, Kemp yeah. face. And I want you to see my hair like that. Look at that. It's great, isn't it? So, um, well, <laughs> did you say something about me washing my hair? Thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, yeah, I'm going to. I just put the chart on. Now you've really upset me. I'm going to put the chart on. Um, <laughs> do, you, do, you know, do you know what? Um, Goff already left this class earlier on because he was upset because Jessica joined us. And now we, now you lot have joined us. Oh my god! Um, so if if we suddenly if we suddenly lose Goff, we we know what's happened. So uh, now. We, we, we've, we're now into it proper. I, I, I was sort of saying about caves and I was um, and I was really getting into this timeline. Um, and one thing one thing about these timelines is that they're very varied. Um, this is a rather interesting one. Um, it was decided on Tuesday night. I, I said to everybody, we, we've got uh, we've got about 11, 12 people on a on a Tuesday night, and uh, most of them were there on Tuesday, as you are in Atlantic Major. Uh, I basically said, "What? How do you want me to do the? How do you want me to do uh, prehistory? Do you want me to um, do a little bit of um, Paleolithic archaeology? Then we'll do a bit of Neolithic, and then we'll do a bit of Middle Paleolithic, and then we'll do a bit of Bronze Age." And so he said, "Stop, Carl. We're going to do it in chronological order. So we're going to look at all all this all this wonderful evidence from the Paleolithic period." We're going, next week, we're going to have a presentation about box grove, right? And we're also going to look at the Piltdown Man forgery. We can't do Charles, we can't not do Charles Dawson. We, we, we've got to do the Piltdown Man forgery, but we're going to do box grove next week. And then we're going to look at, um, then we're going to start to get into the other stuff like Pont Newith Cave, and we're going to look at Cattle Cave, um, and we're going to look at the uh, likes of Craswell Crags. That's really ex that's really exciting stuff in the Paleolithic period, but we're not just going to be looking at archaeology in Britain uh, because there's some amazing, fascinating stuff from the uh, Neolithic period in Switzerland coming up. We've got the new evidence that you've mentioned about population movements in other parts of the world. So we're going to probably do a be, be, be a bit more cheeky and look more at British archaeology. But we've got to go out of the box and we've got to look at um, being more linked to to other continental bits of archaeology um, and there's some wonderful archaeological evidence going on in um in regards to the uh, neanderthal remains in romania which we never ever visit um and obviously a little bit of france altamira um we, we can look at some of the early evidence uh, the, the rift valley in africa we can also expand on that thought and, and that lecture that we had a very, very long time ago. It was so long ago, I don't know if it was a year ago or a year and a half ago, where I, I was I was I was given the impression that maybe there was more than just out of Africa, that there may have been out of Asia and there may have been out of like Peking Man and um, and when we look at the archaeological evidence in Japan and Australia and also May I be damned and spited at the stake um, and not be involved in the woke movement. Maybe there are mass movements in, of people in North America tens of thousands of years before uh, we 
the, the before most archaeologists agree or disagree. So this is one thing w- that we're going to really look at. We, we've got this nice little chart here, but the one we've actually been using um, is actually, hang on. We've been looking at this one here. Hang on, so if I can. We've been looking at this one. Now, I... I I, I went off on a complete complete tangent on Tuesday, and and I failed to I failed to um, make one simple explanation. Got tongue tied there. The the difference between prehistory and history. I know most of you know the difference between prehistory and history, but then again, maybe uh, it's got more com- com- complicated and convoluted. Um, than you, you may have understood before. So when we think about prehistory, we think it's always, the word prehistory is always used to um, define civilizations that have no written history, yeah? So if you if you look at, for example, um, before the Romans got to Britain, uh, before Julius Caesar, uh, before um, 55 BC, um, 56 BC, BC, 54 BC, Julius Caesar, there was no written history here. However, there's, there's quite there's quite a strange sort of sticks to be hit there at the legs of some of the historians. We, we do actually have coins at that, that stage in Britain that ha- actually have names on them. Um, and those names that we find on coins preserve some tribal leaders, but they also preserve tribal names like the Ikenai, um, like the Trinavanti tribe, the Chiro tribe, you might see on see on coins. So isn't that not is that not um, moving tribal people in Britain into the historic period, well before AD forty three and well before uh, Julius Caesar? But then again, you can't really argue that it's just a few coins. How dare I be smited down? But but the but the fact is, uh, one of one of the, one of the key elements with this is is when me and Kathy were exploring. Uh, me and Kathy have done some really um, strange explorations in caves and uh, things that go bump in the night. And one of the locations that me and Kathy visited once um, in rain, in rain that was very much um, um, horizontal was the burial chamber at Mice Howe. And when we went into the burial chamber at Mice Howe, I don't know if Kathy was part of this, but... Um, at the end of us looking at the burial chamber at Mice Howe, there was only the, the group that we had. There, there were seven of us. We, we were there for about an hour because Kathy couldn't stop talking to the guide. And, and then the guide, as I'm going out the room, the, the guide said, can you come back here? And, I, and I, I, so I went back in and I don't know if Kathy was with me. Either Bill or someone was with me. And the guide actually said, there's something I want to show you. And they were actually, they were actually um, lines etched into some of the walls at Mice Howe burial chamber that weren't from the Viking period. They weren't runes. They, they were lines etched into the stones from the Neolithic period. Um, and the guy said, what do you make of this? And I just, and, and we went into a discussion and whoever was with me at that moment, I wish Kathy would either tell me it was her or it was Bill. If shout out if you were with me, Kathy. Uh, when when, when the, the guy was showing actually, um, does, does this act, is this actually a form of Neolithic writing? And, and it's just, if that's the case, uh, then Britain was in a historic period in the Neolithic period because there is a form of writing. What actually is writing? So the problem is the word prehistoric is, is a very disjointed terminology. Another, another, another point that we actually made Another point that we actually made on on Tuesday, for example, um, was questioning the work of Flinders Petrie. And the work of Flinders Petrie was is the work known as seriation. What Flinders Petrie did with his Nagada Desert archaeology was he said that, um, that he, he says there's... Um, a, a typology. Basically, you get very basic pottery, and then you get pottery with rims that are developing. Then you get pottery with a, um, a rim developing and, and an arm on it, handle, and then you get uh, pottery with painting on. And obviously, that proves that um, the pottery has evolved, right? Which is fine. It, it makes sense. But then, when you chuck in the Etruscan lecture 
that um, we did not so long ago. In the Etruscan lecture, one minute in like the eight, um, 750 years BC, you've got um, 800 years BC, you've got really highly advanced um, art and architecture. That, that you know, wonderful forms, one, one naturalistic forms, um, and then you get you get art that seems to digress, seems to sort of get a little bit more basic, and you're thinking, hang on a minute, and then it gets really advanced again, right? And you start to think, well, what is that law? Why why are they producing tat, right? And then they're not producing tat because um, the argument then comes in is that if you if you look at Picasso. Uh, and you, you look at Van Gogh, um, Van Gogh and Picasso um, as, as some of the most expensively traded works of art on this planet. They're, they're very advanced. Um, and you think, well, yeah, they, they might be advanced to you, but um, some of uh, Picasso's works um, um, are quite bizarre and, and Van Gogh's are quite childlike. Um, I would prefer to have something like a constable on the wall. Um, or, or, a, or a Renoir or a Monet. Um, I know you've got differences in colours and, 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 and the way things evolve. Um, but then again, to us, a Van Gogh uh, and Picasso are, are some of the most enlightened, highly advanced levels of... of, of and even when you look at a Banksy today, um, you know, ba Banksy's um, sprayed on walls and so on. You think, oh, well, that's OK, but I, I, I've seen better, right? I love Banksy, by the way, but I've seen better. So just because art and architecture seems to um, hark back to earlier periods doesn't mean to say that civilization is basic and not, not advanced and not civilized. So I needed to put that in there. That, that was a very, very important point. And I think I think I think the issue what I, the issue the other issue what I what I'd like to do um, is I'd like to um, I'd like to basically then explain what all this type of stuff means. Paleolithic, Neolithic. What, what does all that mean? What does the Stone Age mean? Because if we if we look back at if we look back at this chart, for example, charts galore, Stone Age, and then underneath you've got Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic. Let's go back to that other chart that we just had. There you go. That's where it breaks it down. So one minute you've got prehistory and history, and I'll be trying to explain that, and it really makes no sense anymore. And the other thing in archaeology is there's always boundaries. There's always that there's always lines between periods and, and this and that and going in that direction and that direction and over there and whatever, right? Um, do you know, I, I, I know that um, you guys in Lantrip Major used to love me standing there and saying that uh, Ellen in particular, I think that's why she stopped coming to the classes because I kept winding her up with the dates. Uh, uh, it, would be, um, it, it would be like, um, I would say, oh, on the 14th of October, um, in, in, on the, uh, in the year um, uh, 1282, this happened at 4.15. And people are going, oh, wow, that's really accurate. I used to remember Ellen writing it down. And, and then you would all laugh in the room and say, no, he's, ha he's having a laugh, right? Um, but the thing is, there's something very serious about that because um, I, I did that in jest most of the time, but there was a very serious level because what we've got to do, we've got to have an end and a start date to try and put things in, right? Unfortunately, um, when you have an end and a start date, um, and say, for example, you get to after the Iron Age in AD 43, um, you, I've, I've, I've excavated on Roman sites and come across flint. And, and you're thinking, hang on a minute, um, I've, I've come across flint. And you're thinking, right, this is in the Roman period. Right. They didn't use flint in the Roman period. And then you excavate a, a medieval site and you come across flint. Hang on, they didn't use flint in the medieval period. Right. The point is, is that they didn't use bronze before the Bronze Age. They didn't use iron before the Iron Age. Um, they, they, and, and that's the point. Um, there are continuances of usages. So in the Roman period, what do we have? What do we have lots of what do we have lots of being used bronze? The Roman period is not the Bronze Age. They're using iron. So is the Roman period the Iron Age? No, they're not because they're in a historical period and they are a civilization. Uh, it's the Roman era. Now, one, one thing. Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I, 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 I want you to see me on the screen because I'm so vain. So uh, one, one, of, one, of, one of the things, one of the biggest criticisms that has been um, earmarked at me recently uh, is that um, I, I published 
published the Romans in South Wales in, in May. Um, and it's the first book I've ever completely sold out. Um, we, 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 we sold. Yeah, you can't buy a copy, so I can't even sell you a copy. So this isn't even a sales piece. So don't worry about it. You're not going to get me asking you for to buy a copy. So we sold 550 copies of Romans in South Wales within basically um, eight months, which was great. I had a sellout. But mind you, you can buy Romans in South Wales, a special edition. So we went with a new reprint. Um, and so you can buy a copy of that, it's 12 quid. See, I, I, I did a promotion on the other book. Anyway, the main thing is, the main thing is, the main point is, is that the biggest criticism that was uh, wielded at me with that book is the title, Romans in South Wales. And people said, well, what about the, the Iron Age people living in South Wales that were still not signing up to the, to, to the Romans? Um, and I said, the point is, is that after AD 43, when we look at British archaeology, it's the Roman era, it's the Roman period. 99% of everyone in Britain at that stage, from the beginning of the Roman era, the Roman period, all the way to whatever date you want to go to, 476 is the date that I actually go to, 99% um, of the people in Britain, um, at most stages, other than an influx of Roman legionaries at several stages throughout that period of occupation, 99% of the population was actually British, was actually, was actually non-Roman, right? But we call it the Roman era to make things easier for us. I, I, I was wondering, I was hoping that one of you would fall into the trap of reading the Rutland um, article. Uh, and in fact, I'm quite surprised that none of you jumped upon saying that the, one of the most important finds found, um, not just in the past few weeks, one of the most important finds found in the history of Roman Britain, was actually found at Rutland very recently. And it was a beautiful Roman mosaic. And I, I know we did some, I know we looked at that in, in some of the online stuff. Uh, but um, but, but I, I, I've seen people be vitriolic against Alice Roberts when she's done her digging for Britain. When she looked at digging for Britain, she looked at the Rutland um, villa and she looked at the Roman mosaic. She was saying this has been constructed by the Romans, blah, blah, blah. And I've seen people being really nasty and cruel about Alice Roberts and saying, what does Alice Roberts know? She's, she's just an academic that signs into everything being Roman. But no, Alice Roberts doesn't sign into everything being Roman. Alice Roberts thinks the same as me. It's the Roman era. The, the Rutland mosaic was actually produced by people that were trained by the Romans at the Corinian school of uh, Roman mosaic uh, makers, Corinian Sirencester, and they were trained and they moved, they went up north to Leicestershire in around 350 years AD and they constructed this mosaic. These, these, are, the, these are the same people uh, who were responsible for making the Chedworth mosaic, which dates to about 420. But these were, these were trained in, in the art of the Romans, but they weren't Roman. They, they, were, um, they were Britons. I don't like using the word Romana British because it doesn't mean anything either. But the fact of the matter is the point I'm trying to make is with, with this, this is really relevant to prehistory. You have to have boundaries in prehistory because if you didn't have bad boundaries in prehistory, you would be all over the place. But actually, after the break, I've got to, I've got to remind myself because there's so much to, to do that there was a, in, in Denmark, in Denmark, uh, the archaeologist Tomlinson um, was given the onerous task of, of organizing the boxes of artifacts to be displayed in the Copenhagen Museum, Denmark. And he was basically said, right, display these finds. And he, and he, and he looked in the boxes and he said, right, there, there's, there, there's flint objects alongside iron objects. And in another box, there was bronze objects alongside iron objects. And he says, how do I organize this? Right. And he, he made the ballpark guess, which meant that he was 99% right. He made the ballpark guess that most of the flints predate the Bronze Age. 99% right, because there's an overlap, right? Probably a lot more than that in regards to flint. So he put these flint objects in display cabinets. And then he said, right, what we're going to do, this, this, remember, is in 1816, into the 1820s, into the 1830s. Right. So then Tomlinson said, right, the bronze stuff is, 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 has to predate the Roman period. So he put most of the bronze stuff in cabinets, right? Uh, but it's, he was probably 90% right. 
And then all the iron stuff was placed into the cabinets, right? But the main thing is, um, you if any of you have ever come across the words terminus anti uh, quem and uh, um, uh, terminus post quem, basically it talks about the boundaries, which we could, which we will also do next week. Uh, the terminus dates, uh, because otherwise we could just get overrun by a uh, detail. Uh, basically, put boundaries, and this was really important. It, it was a revolutionary thing. And one thing I would like to say, and you know, you all know, I like to make swipes at the British establishment in archaeology. Um, it was in 1807 that Denmark had a, a, a protection act for ancient monuments. Our protection acts didn't come in until the 1880s, so that the Danish, Danish archaeology has been far, far more advanced than British archaeology for a very, very, very long time. And guess what? In, in Denmark, if, if, if there's an ancient tree, it's protected. Over here, if you've got an ancient tree that remembers the, the events, um, say, for example, the, the, um, the, the church at the Gate of the Dead at a church um, near Wrexham, uh, there's an ancient tree there that remembers the events of um, some native victories over uh, the English crown. Um, that tree is not protected. But in Denmark, those types of trees are protected at point of death. In fact, metal detecting is banned in Denmark altogether. Um, as you know, I've got to, I, I've, I've got to be pro-metal detecting these days, but um, uh, deep down, I have another sentiment. Anyway, the point that with, with all that being said, you have to have these boundaries. Now, I, 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 I want, I, we've, we've mentioned the prehistoric we've mentioned what those those boundaries mean now we need to go back to one of those charts so let's go back to one of those charts again um and it's just it's just it's jessica's fault today that that, that you can't um that, that you that, that you're seeing me it's not really but you know i'm just going to blame it on jessica jessica you get the blame she's gone now i've upset her um <laughs> It's the okay. restrictions. I, I, I'm not going to restrict you at all, though. It's fine. So, um, <laughs> so, so, looking at this chart again, what I, what I'd like to do is is we get this chart there, uh, and one one the, the the terminology here. So, so what we've done, <laughs> what Tomlinson said, what, what Tomlinson said, he said he said that there's a Stone Age there, Stone Age there it is, Bronze Age and Iron Age. Right. He wasn't referring to uh, the divisions in the Stone Age as Paleolithic yet. Right. And then when you get to the Bronze Age, later on, you get divisions within the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. Right. So this is really, really important. But there is something very, very much missing from this chart. It's the wording uh, Mesolithic and Neolithic. So, again, what we need to do, we need to go away from that chart. And we need to um, go to this one. So you've got Paleolithic and you've got the word Neolithic. But that's, no, 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 that's not really helpful because <laughs> one, one of the things with these charts is that they, in different parts of the world, this is a key point. This is a different part of the world. In different parts of the world, they, they have different dates for the starts of their periods. Right. So, for example, we, we get into um, we get into the beginning of our, um, we get into the beginning of our Mesolithic period. Um, epox, uh, uh, the, the end, start again. We get to the end of our Mesolithic period about 8,500, 8,000 years ago. And then we start with the Neolithic period because there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a boundary. It's the point that Britain becomes disconnected from Europe for the first time. There's a, there's a thing about Brexit there, if you didn't see it. Um, and therefore, we see the end, end of the Mesolithic period. So what we need to do, we need to go through these charts. Let's find a, let's find a Mesolithic date. The dates go on for different, different parts of the world. right? And then we move on there. It's all Paleolithic and Neolithic. Oh, and you guys, shut up. Good. I, I, Jessica, I put them in their place straight away. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just... Uh, that's the one I wanted. Right, there we go. This is the one I wanted. Okay, there we go. This, this, this is where we want to be, okay? So, as, as you say, as I have already said, the dates on the side are quite varied. But what we've got, we've got the end of the Paleolithic period, the upper Paleolithic period, roughly 
around 12,000 years ago. And this is the date that we're going to use, 12,000 years ago. The lines are just guides. And then you've got 12,000 years ago, you've got this period of the Mesolithic that ends around 8,000, 8,500 years ago. And then you move into this other period, the Neolithic period, this fascinating Neolithic period. All these periods are, are majorly fascinating. And then what you then find is that you go from the Neolithic period, you go into the Bronze Age, uh, which starts around 4,100 years ago. And then you go from the Bronze Age into the Iron Age about 750 years ago, and then from the Iron Age to that specific date of 43 AD. Now, looking at this, it's really in the one thing that it really sticks out <coughs> is that as you slowly, as you slowly, the, the Mesolithic period here is a bit vague, right? It, it, it's, it's, um, my, my dates for the Mesolithic uh, are 12,000 to about 8,000, 8,500 years ago. And then you've got 8,500 years ago, uh, the ne Neolithic period to um, 4,100 uh, years ago. The Bronze Age is a relatively small period from 2,100 to, uh, um, oh, I've, I've mixed my BCs and my ADs, these up, uh, 4,100 uh, to 2,750 years ago, right? I've, I've realized I've made mixed up my BCs and my years ago. Um, and then the Iron Age itself is is a tad a thousand years, um, a thousand years, um, under a thousand year period. So moving away from that, what, what we've got is that if we look at this chart, we can see Paleolithic. Paleolithic means the, the beginning at the start of the use of lithics, at the use of stone. So this, this is the... <coughs> All the Paleolithic st stuff is the early Stone Age. If we look at Tomlinson's dating, it's the early Stone Age, right? The early Stone Age is the Paleolithic period, right? The upper, the middle and low, lower Paleolithic period. This is the um, early Stone Age. And then we get into the Mesolithic period, which means that the middle Stone Age, the middle use of the lithics. <laughs> this is when, th this is Meso, as in Mesoamerica. Um, um, you, you've got, um, You've got that word meso middle. So this is the point. You've got the Mesolithic period, the, the middle time when flints and lithics are being used. So we've got the ending of that period with the beginning of the Neolithic period, um, 8,500 or 8,000 years ago, right? And then we move into this wonderful Neolithic period. The Neolithic period, i.e., is the new period of the use of lithics. This is when um, this is when you see the best. Um, of um, lithic work. This is when you see the, the absolute advance of the use of stone tools in the Neolithic period. And then you give way 4,100 years ago to the Bronze Age. So obviously we're, we're back into all this. So that also, that's all relatively self-explanatory. However, many, many years ago when I was teaching these classes, one thing that was constantly being raised was that you've got a stone a stone making period, you have a bronze making period, you have an iron making period. What about a tin making period? Right, you can't have bronze without tin. In that case, what a copper making period? You must have a copper age, which is known as the Chalcolithic period. Um, why don't we have them in British archaeology? British archaeologists have made things quite simple. They, they, they've just done it this way. We do, in, in Britain, for example, when, when, when we do look at the context of Cymru, Wales, <coughs> we, do lot, we do see lots of um, hordes of copper axes, which have been found particularly in the, um, in the Rhondda Valley area. You get, you get hordes of, of, of copper axes, just copper axes, not bronze axes. Uh, bronze, as we know, is, is a copper is, is a mix between copper and tin. So we don't have any tin period. We don't have a copper period. You go, go directly into the Bronze Age. But there are times when there's just copper tools out there. And it's very interesting as well when you look, when you look at copper, uh, copper objects basically dating to around 4,500 years ago. Uh, it's very interesting that you've got sort of a, a, a loose period known as the Beaker period. It's not a period that I really like to discuss uh, because... Um, I don't really, I don't really see the, the the Beaker period as being significant as as some archaeologists make out. But 
Um, we've, we've got that period between that transitional period in the in the Neolithic period around 4,500 years ago to around 4,100 years ago as you go into the Bronze Age that you've just got mainly copper being used and you, you've got tin objects being used. Let's just forget about zinc. Um, but naturally, when, when, you, when, you, when you're mining most of these materials, particularly when you're mining tin, you sometimes come across silver and copper, right? And um, when, when, you're, um, when you're mining um, in some other areas, uh, you see the association with uh, roughly um, gold and maybe um, silver um, and other metals as well. We don't have a gold age. And the reason why we don't have a gold age, gold has been used by humans throughout time. The gold has always been used by humans throughout time because it's soft. You can hammer it and it, it is perfect. Right? We don't have a silver age as well. But if you, if you go, if you go to, to, say, for example, the continent, um, when, when I went to the continent as a child, there would be signs everywhere saying copper age. Actually, not, not so much the copper age, they would call it the Chalcolithic period or the Chalcolithic period. I used to call it Chalcolithic period, Chalcolithic. Um, and, um, and I used to think, Copper Age, why don't we have the Copper, copper Age in Britain? They, they, they've got the Copper Age in Cyprus, for example, because when, when you look at the name of Cyprus, um, Cyprus is named after copper. It, it's, um, it's the island of copper, Kypros, copper. That, that, that's what Cyprus means. It's the, it's the island of copper. So they, they're bound to have a Copper Age. So we try to make things very, very simple in British archaeology, but there are massive overlaps. This is one thing I wanted to one, one thing I wanted to mention. So if anyone ever watches this, this is the thing as well. When whenever we um, uh, whenever we watch things like Time Team, and that they come across flints in a Roman context, they don't usually really tell us because it just complicates things. Instead of just saying that they did actually use flint in the Roman period, that's what they should have said. Um, but you don't actually see much of it um, in regards to Time Team. I'm a great fan of Time Team. Time Team have the new series coming out this year that uh, they filmed um, in 2021. So, so watch out for that. It's going to be uh, broadcast on um, on their own channel on YouTube, um, which I do believe you've got to subscribe via Patreon to actually do that. But that's going to be out there. So, what I'd what I'd like to do is is I, I would now now like to now that we've established all these all all this wonderful chronology, I would like to go um, into a, another aspect, um, and I would like to tell us about what's going on in this wonderful Paleolithic period, this this great huge length of middle, lower, and upper Paleolithic. This is this is this is where there's a lot of exciting things going on now. I'm going to have to, unfortunately, I'm going to have to look at the Pavlan cave sooner or later. Um, there are a small band of us who believe that um, the archaeological evidence of Pavlan cave was faked. Um, it was a collection of objects collected from other caves, put down into Goat Hole Cave along the um, spit at the end uh, of the Gower Peninsula. And, um, and it was put together from other caves and things slowly went missing and, and so on. But we're gonna have to do that. We're gonna ha have to look at that as a two hour, hour lecture one day. But that puts us nicely into um, the likes of, um, likes of coming in from the middle Paleolithic into this upper Paleolithic. So, so what, what we've got, we've got Goat Hole Cave um, and we've got, the, the wonderful evidence of Pavlan Cave, but also that we do have between this sort of upper Paleolithic and the Mesolithic, um, what we do find is evidence of Cheddar Man. So what we're going to do, we're going to go with another chart here. So I'm going to try and grab it. Um, hang on a minute. The, the, the other chart was up here a second ago. And oh, we got dinosaurs there. We don't want dinosaurs. Oh, this is the one. I like this one. <laughs> oh, and by the way, this is this is a um, as you know, I, I completely go into tangents. Um, Kathy, would you like a load of um, Shetland wool in the summer? Uh, no, thank you. You don't want Shetland wool directly from six of our Shetland sheep. It's a bit itchy, but I'm sure you could find somebody in the um, Glamorgan shearing, whatever it's called, group. No, we're, we're going to bob it ourselves. Yeah, your craft things. 
I thought I thought you would have jumped to it. Me and Michelle are thinking about you uh, ruining the sheep. Yeah. Chris or well, Lynn would find somebody who might want it. Oh, yeah, might do. No, no, Kathy, we're going to get you to rue the sheep. What we're going to do, we're going to get you into the uh, fleece of the sheep and you can rue it. it you gradually tease it off. Oh, um, the, the scalp of the you would love that. I know you would. So so we put you down for that, Kathy. Thanks for volunteering. Um, I, because I saw the sheep there, because I saw the sheep there, I put that on there. But, so so before this, this twelve thousand year boundary, right? The twelve thousand year boundary here is is where the the our wonderful ice is melting. But before all that, we, we've got um, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Before that, we've got we've got box growth. Um, that's what, as, as we say, we're going to look at that next week. And again, throughout that period, um, if, for example, examples in, in Cymru, uh, Wales, we, we've got a Pont Newth cave, um, Neanderthal evidence, which I know um, Jim has been involved in taking photographs of pterodontist Ted Teeth at, 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 at times with the National Museum of Wales. So we'll, we'll look at that. We'll also look at, as well, before this 12,000 year boundary, before the transition between the Paleolithic period, this, this very long Paleolithic period, the upper Paleolithic period, we, we, we will look at cave art as well. Um, there's been, we've got wonderful art, the Craswell Crags cave art that was um, discovered in the 1980s, 1990s. I, I know the chap who discovered some of this cave art in the um, 1980s, a chap by the name of Rogan. Um, so we'll, we'll look at Craswell Crags um, and we'll also look at the wonderful evidence at um, Goat Hole Cave, uh, uh, not Goat Hole Cave, Cat Hole Cave on the Gower, where we've actually got cave art. And um, I was giving somebody a job interview the other day and um, and I and I, I put her on the spot and I said, right, give me give me a one minute lecture about archaeology and what interests you about archaeology. And she said, oh, she said um, she said one of the most fascinating things about the the archaeology of, of Wales is is that uh, this cave down on the Gower, Cattle, yeah. So she said, yeah, a Cattle cave. Um, and and I said to her, right, when you do a presentation, just wing it because I do it all the time. I said. I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, um, so so she so she went on to this lecture and she said this beautiful art in, in um, this beautiful art in Catall Cave, but unfortunately, um, some idiot um, um, organised for um, um, a grate and um, a gate to be put to stop people going in there, and they now need permission from Cadden to go in there. Um, and, and she said, it's a shame that I can't see it anymore. Um, and I said, yeah, that idiot that you're um, describing as putting the gate and trying to protect them was actually me. And she said, oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. I said, no, it's fine. I get called an idiot all the time. Um, but the fact of the matter is we, we, will, we will be looking at that as well. So that there's so there's so much about this Paleolithic period that I really want, really want to look at. Um, but uh, we, we have to... Um, then we're going to move on. But whilst we're going to be doing that, we're going to be um, we're going to be thinking about some archaeological um, archaeological evidence on the continent um, and around the world. And this 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 period of the Mesolithic, then and we, we 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 start to go into the Mesolithic proper. There we go, Star Car. We love it. We love Star Car. I tell you what, right? I, 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 I could imagine me and Kathy getting into the mud at Star Car, getting covered in lots of mud, working on the artifacts. I know she would absolutely love that. So um, we're going to be we're going to be looking at Star Car, and maybe we might organise a field visit sometime. <coughs> um, I, I'm I'm sure you'd be into that. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll go to we'll go to Star Car, um, and that that will be something that we we cover in our lectures. Um, and also what we what we will be doing is we will be looking at um, the coast of Northumberland and we will be looking at the coast of uh, Yorkshire and we'll be looking at other sites like um, Hoyt um, and we'll be looking at what archaeological evidence we can actually find from sites like that. So so that's what we're going to be doing in regards to the Mesolithic period. Um, and then. And obviously look at the evidence um, at Cheddar Gorge um, and we'll, we'll be looking at some of the new evidence that's been, been found associated with the Mesolithic period. So that'll be absolutely brilliant. Um, and then what we're going to do is somehow we're going to look at this period around 
um, 8,500 and 8,000 years ago, which is an absolutely, um, which is an absolutely massive period. <coughs> it's the period there, and you can see it on our little chart, and it says Britain was finally an island around 8,000 years ago. Finally, we get rid of Europe for the first time and we become um, an independent island. You can see the political connotations there, just to wind Kathy up. And the main thing is, is this period changes everything because we're now into um, an isolation period. We're now into the Neolithic period. We're now into when things massively change, when we start to move from uh, a culture that's very much linked to the continent and waves of people and waves of animals and waves of trees and, and waves of flora and fauna. We're now, we're now into a, a new period. Uh, where, where, where things where things change um, a great deal. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to we're going to take we're going to take a little bit of a break, um, and we're going to ask if there's any questions because I have been going on a bit. But what I'm going to do, uh, I would like um, to know if Jessica's got anything to say about this of uh, everything that we do. Only go Jessica up to the. Um, the Neolithic boundary of 8,500, 8,000 years ago. So anything you'd like to see, say, Jessica? Um, I, I think there is a, a big issue with this time period. I think um, in popular culture, um, how we view people, to, like you said, to be in caves and that you always see the images of the discovery of fire. And personally to me, just looking at it all, it, I think popular culture really does affect the way people view things. And we see it with the medieval period. Um, and I think what the issue is with all of this is the uh, fact that the archaeology is very rich when you do find archaeology. However, it's very sparse. And I think people um, sort of tend to sway towards branding things ritualistic, et cetera. Whereas... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, uh, now, now you've done it. Now you've <laughs> said something. I, I need to jump in here now. I need. Sorry. Sorry. You're going to You're cut dead now. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, it's all right, Carl. It's just one of those cop outs. No, you've led me into this because that's a complete cop out. We don't want to hear from you anymore because um, this is the point. One of the one of the things that makes me really, really angry is that everything um, to some archaeologists in the prehistoric period is ritualistic. Um, you you go you you look at the Neanderthals, for example, and the first thing that they say when they see. Uh, um, shells dating back to 40,000 years ago. So this is in the Upper Paleolithic period, Neanderthal. What, what, what they say, oh, we've, we've got these shells um, painted red. It's got to be ritualistic. Oh, and by the way, we've got a burial in a cave. They must have used some rituals and put flowers with it. Um, and we look at, for example, um, the Lady of Pavlan Cave was actually a bloke um, from around 33,000 years ago. We are definitely buried with ritual. In fact, this, the, the, uh, in fact, <coughs> the only thing that people did in prehistory was ritual. They didn't do any farm and they didn't do anything. And that, mm. that, that's the biggest problem, you know, and, and that's the biggest problem. Um, and um, so I, I like to sway away from that. I, um, it, it's the same. It's the same argument when people attack me and say, oh, you're saying everything was done by the Romans in the Roman period. I say, have you actually read my books? Well, what I actually say in my books that most of the roads in Britain were not built by the Romans. They were actually trackways that already existed that, that, that the Romans followed the courses, right? So yeah. you've actually got to look at what we're actually saying. You've got to look at the archaeological evidence. The archaeological evidence tells us that predominantly life in the prehistoric period was not ritual. Because let, let me tell you this, let, let me, and if everyone can focus, let's have no more interruption in the can, can you let me focus on this point? Um, for example, um, I, I, I was sat down the other day and I'm in a conversation with somebody and, and I basically said, um, I said, I've now got records of my family being buried at uh, the Barry Cemetery. Right. And they said, are you going to visit them? And I said, well, um, probably. And I, then they said, oh, do, you, do you actually visit the grave, uh, the grave of your granddad? And me and my granddad, we were really close. I talk about my granddad and her a lot. Right. And we were really close. And, you know, the last time I visited where my granddad was three years ago. Yeah, um, because I just don't have time. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say that, Granddad, but I'm sorry I haven't visited you. Um, but I remember him every single day anyway, because I'm, I'm, I've got these little conversations. The point I'd like to make, even with computers, even with cars, even with um, a National Health Service, even with uh, 
all these things that we've got today, we still don't have time to visit our loved ones who were, who were buried in church graveyards. I know some of you guys do, but most of us don't. That's the reality. Most of us don't, right? So if we can't do it in this in this technological age, if we can't have time for ritual, if we can't have time for uh, for being um, having reverence for our ancestors, how the hell did people in the past have time? And the, mm. the, the answer is they didn't. Um, it's absolute nonsense to talk about um, everyone having time and these massive feasts. When we get into the, the, the sorry, you shouldn't have said anything, Jessica. When we get into the Neolithic period, we 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 um, we, we see um, idiots like uh, Mike Parker Pearson um, talking about um, talking about feasts and and everyone going to Stonehenge. You know, millions of people ended up at Stonehenge having a feast. Well, my, my counter argument straight away is who looked after the cattle? Who looked after the field? Who looked after the children? Who looked after the disabled people at home? Who did all that if you've got all these massive feasts? If you've got all these massive feasts, where's all the food coming from, right? The evidence that we see at um, the likes of Stonehenge is that um, you've got built up layers of archaeology um, being um, built up in the ground. And I do apologize. I, I've, um, I've actually been warned about making any attacks on any of the archaeologists. So I didn't call Mike Parker Pearson an idiot. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, um, I don't agree with this point of view. Uh, my point of view is that people lived. When you think about people living, they didn't have time for lots of this stuff. So that's, that's the one thing. And the other thing I wanted to say was that when we get into the Neolithic period, um, and I mentioned at the beginning, I mentioned about the idea of, 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 of with that article, that you've got families, you've got families, um, and then you've got community groups. Right? This is the way things develop in the Neolithic period. One minute you're represented as a family, next minute you've been uh, represented as a community, the next minute you're re represented as a tribe, the next minute you're re represented as a civilization that Rome was come along and, 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 and muck around with it all. Right? Um, the other thing I'd like to say is, is that the, is, is something that I, I used to very much aspire to. Right. And actually, I realized I aspire to the same values. I used to say that the landscape was divided into zones. I used to say that the landscape was divided, in, divided into the prohibitive zones, like the woodlands that you don't go in. If you go into those woodlands, you're going to get attacked by a lynx or a bear or a wolf um, or something else. Um, you don't go into the woodlands. Those are prohibited zones. Right? So we're talking about as Mesolithic um, developed. Uh, when you've got lots of woodlands everywhere before the upland areas are completely felled and so on. And then you get into those areas of, of, of living. So you've got a pure division. You've got areas you don't go, areas of living. And then slowly those areas of living are divided into uh, areas of the ancestors, areas of living in the prehistoric zones. And this is the way things develop. This is the way we see things develop. And, and um, this is that great um, landscape that we're that we're looking at. And Jessica, anything else you'd like to say? No, I think it, you were getting where I was getting to as well. No, I and, I, oh. and I definitely think that um, people look at the past as uh, very ritualistic, maybe um, backwards. And I think when you look at the bigger picture and you see the connections between sites, even just looking at how people develop with their communication and um, you definitely see how this is a period that has more to offer than what's on the surface that's presented by popular culture, really. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. More to offer. Um, right. So let's see if there's anything you'd like to say, Goff, because we all want to hear Goff. No, I don't think I could sort of uh, tend to agree with what you and Jessica are saying. Thank you. Good. Uh, well, we, we, Jessica, we've got a full school so far. Uh, Jeff, Kathy's going to disagree with all of it. Right, so what about you, Henri? Anything you'd like to say? The, the Henri, if nobody's met Henri, he's a French guy who's lived all his life in Ireland, now living in Wick. Anything you'd like to say, Henri? Bonjour. Um, <laughs> just like to say, it, there's an awful lot to take on board here. So, you know, it, it's really expanded what I should be looking at. And, and, and one, one, thing that, one thing that we should be doing, this is meant to be a, a massive introduction. And um, this is why I didn't want to do terminus postquems and terminus antiquems today. But the one thing we, we will be recapping, I'm just trying to chuck a load of words out there. And also another word that I should be using is post-processionalist archaeology. Um, post-processionist archaeology is re-examining the evidence and re-looking at it. I'm, I'm more of a post-processionist archaeologist that we... Uh, 
that 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 there there's lots of, there's a lot more to archaeology than thinking every everything's religious religion and ritualistic. That there's a there's a lot more things to understand um, because one of one of the most boring things, Henry, is when you go into it. Now this this is another point I made on Tuesday. And this is a point I made last night, actually, more than anything. One of the most boring things is when you go to an archaeological site and they tell you, they say, this is this. There's, there's no room for it. Um, we were looking at um, the, uh, the sense of space and movement within buildings last night uh, with, with, my, um, with, with the class I do on a Wednesday at six online. And, um, and one of the things I said that um, when you go to a castle, when you go to a castle, it says there's a wall and that wall was used for something else. And it says there's a date. Uh, and also it tells us who it was built by. That's all it says. It doesn't actually tell the relationship between that wall uh, and the time span and uh, whether there was anyone uh, who was who was a common person who may have built it. How mm. was it built? Um, um, <clears throat> how long did it last? Um, and all these other things. And what the relationship with that wall was between movement within a building was it to stop people moving around was it was it and and this is what we we should be looking at and and one of the one of the saddest most boring things is when we look at prehistory is that everybody lives in a cave and they didn't yeah. but that's where we get the archaeological evidence and in that and the one thing one thing that we said about shannon Dar cave last night was that um we could have gone into quite a heated debate, but it's really difficult to do in an hour. And I, kn I knew what Peter was trying to get at last night. He was trying to drive out that l some of the burials at Shanindar were actually buried uh, <coughs> with, with, uh, with, with uh, flowers because we, we got evidence of pollen. Now, what you then do is you think, right, flowers don't grow in a cave. They don't. But that evidence of pollen indicates what the landscape was like and then what the landscape was like sets the sets those people within the landscape and the importance of the pollen and what flowers were represented in Shannonda. And then you expand into the landscape and you go beyond bears mm. and being attacked by bears and wolves in caves. <clears throat> right now, now we've got to, now we've got to go, you know what, right. Maybe I should just focus on a cup of tea i know i can hear a little voice going kathy are you you haven't heard me you haven't heard me right okay right okay anything anyone would like to say in a lancet major oh my god there's nothing they don't want to say anything jessica is, is, is this what happens with you when you're teaching and they don't say anything sorry we're reaching it <laughs> anything you would like to say uh, do you know what i'm really missing looking at you karen i, I just wish i could be with you and sharing your love. <laughs> you missed out the lead age. Oh God, can you remember that lecture? Oh my God, that was a long time ago, love. Um, so the thing is, the thing is, um, I think we really struggled with that one because we, we do see the use of lead um, throughout the Roman period. And we've, we've obviously got lead being associated um, with with mining of iron um, and therefore lead must have been massively available in the um, Iron Age. Um, and then we might see the association with lead, for example, with tin. Um, and then, and you are right. Um, lead, lead, yeah, that, that, that's, that's another thing. You've thrown me there because it didn't mention that before, but I should have, you are right. I missed out the lead age. But and the titania made, but I think we're into that now. Go on, anything else, folks? My God, they're boring, Jessica. What have you done to them? They used to always ask questions. <laughs> We've gone quiet. I think, I think I they're think muted, it, actually. Do, do, do you know what I think it is? What I think it is, I, I think uh, because I don't come down and see Keith anymore, I think he's taken over the class and he said, look, don't talk to Carl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's what it is. I think I don't. I don't. They're all Carl. They're yeah. all eating Christmas cake and food and drinking booze. So I don't <laughs> think you're going to get much of a reaction. Okay. All right then, darlings. All right then, we're going to take a break. And 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 Kathy, um, uh, is everything still okay with you with the trip to um to Chichester? 
She's disappeared again. Hey, I think what it is, Kathy's learned how to use a mic and she's just decided to switch me off. By the way, Kathy, I got your check. You're all paid for. I just thought I'd mention that. Right, let's take a break. <coughs> oh, God. Jessica, what, what, what a thing, eh? So, <laughs> um, so Jess, Jess, do you think it'd be okay that you could go back next week? Yes, I think so. Um, spoke to uh, someone who works closely with it, and it seems like, even though it was said, those regulations, it doesn't seem like it's going to be put into place anyway, so I'm happy to go back and just get started back to normal. Right, okay, then you, Jessica's back next week, folks. Okay, good. Right, all right, all right then, we're going we're gonna to take a break. Right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run off and have a cup of tea. Oh... Uh, see, see, and, and, and everyone's gone. You know, it's just like one of those things. I might, might do a little bit of a mute a minute. I might uh, mute. I'll be good. Before I start swearing.
Oh, sorry, Goff. I've been saying I've, I've been ready for the past minute, but I realised I was muted. All right. I've got to be honest with you, Goff, right? Jim's been quite quiet today. Yeah. What can I say? Did you, Man, um, did you hear that um, got access to the um, 1921 census uh, today? Yeah. The internet. Hey, Carl. There's you no got one access? here under 18, so you're quite safe. <laughs> He's put on his video. He's not going to have to talk to anyone under Shut up. Right, oh, talk, talk about this Birmingham thing again. 1928, 1921. Twenty-one census. You, you, everyone has access to it now online. Oh right. That that be um. Nineteen twenty-one at census. That should be good. Well, it'd be interesting. You can find out all about your grandparents and granddad, great granddad. <laughs> Barry mm. in Kazakhstan. Yeah, we know all about that. <laughs> the Russians are invaded Kazakhstan today. Didn't realize how big it was. Kazakhstan is huge, isn't it? So it's the size of Western Europe. And you've got Turkmenistan as well. That's, that's next door to Afghanistan. That's huge. That's yeah, incredible. I didn't know that. Not many people know that. Isn't um, uh, is, um, Kazakhstan is the um, the one where Borat comes from, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Caspian Sea, that's an interesting place, isn't it? Is it the Caspian Sea or the Aral Sea drying up? It's the Aral, isn't it? Uh, I, the Caspian Sea, that's where that's on Kazakhstan, I think. And that's uh, where all the oil is. Mm. I wonder what architecturally or sort of archaeological wise is around that part of the world. Quite a bit, I would think. Do, do, you, know, do, you, know, do you know what? We, you know, we might be pushed to do a bit of prehistory there, and that'd be Kazakhstan. Yeah. We'll have a look. And that, that, that was one of the questions I was going to ask everybody. So, everybody, we're all back. Jessica, are you there? I am. But if, I, if I've got a dash for two minutes, my. Um, my 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 Thursday morning gang have got a, a know my ritual that I've got to sometimes dash, um, so I'll dash for two minutes and you can take over with a little bit of a slot, okay? And I'll I'll, I'll go off. Yeah, no, that's fine. So so you'll have to watch for me coming back on, okay? Anyway, yeah, no, that's fine, Carl. I wanted everybody to think. I don't want an answer this week, right? And even you, Jessica, as well. Um, I want I wanted sometimes sometimes there are subjects that that are that evade me um and before christmas with with my gang on a tuesday and a, a thursday morning i looked at archaeological finds you know the top 10 archaeological finds made in 2021 and i'd only ever heard of one of them and i'd only just covered that the week earlier um so so Archaeology is moving so fast these days that, that I can't be knowing everything. So if there's any areas, I'm talking to everybody now, at the end when we do the questions, if there's any areas of prehistoric Britain that you feel we need to cover, then let me know. Don't, don't do the obvious ones like uh, Callahallan and South Uist and, and Hebrides, or don't even mention Orkney because that's going to be well covered. Um, just think really deep and maybe there might be a subject in prehistory that you'd like me to cover in the British context. We, we've already had um, Goff mentioning Kazakhstan and I thought, right, let's do a bit of archaeology, prehistoric archaeology in Kazakhstan. That, that, should, that, should, be, that should be really good. So we, we know we're doing Box Grove next week. Um, I would like to start off with a little bit of Tomlinson. Um, and I'd like to remind everybody, um, I know you've had the letter that um, your class fees... Um, uh, a pay, uh, cover everybody up until next week. Start sending your monies in for um, the class fees um, for the next two months. I know, I know, a couple of you have, have already paid that, and I would really appreciate that. So the class class fees will be now due. So I've got that out the way. So Jess, if um, you've got to take over as an instance, then uh, we, we we've got to crack on. So what I'd like to do now, um, I think, I think the point that Henry made before the break is that is that there's a lot to take on and. 
I, I didn't say this was going to be easy. And and I think this is going to be one of the areas of archaeology that um, that that we need to try and get into the depths of the subject. Uh, you know, sometimes we do something like the Newport ship and, and I go over the go over the basics and we don't sometimes get into the grips of it because it's such a big subject. But I think prehistory, we, we can afford to expand a lot, lot more because it's an area that has a lot, lot more interpretation and a lot, lot more inference with other archaeological sites. And back to that thing as well as if anyone's got a site around the world from a prehistoric context they want us to cover, then we'll do it. I'm really looking forward to uh, the Swiss villages uh, that are on stilts from the Neolithic period. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to looking at Romania as well, um, the Anthols, uh, and hopefully visit the Rift Valley in Africa and some more early stuff from the likes of um, some very early stuff from the likes of North America. And I do believe that um, somebody's put a message up now, which I'm going to quickly read. Uh, Oh yeah, that's something um, related to the uh, lecture. It was just basically a uh, uh, possible uh, report oh, for the future. Me. Yes. All right then. Well, 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 you're gonna have to tell me about that um, if we do it. Right. So okay, I'm gonna show you a little bit of an image. Uh, the image is gonna be of um, this 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 sort of historian archaeologist antiquarian from the early 1800s, 200 years ago, actually. The two age system has been with, the three age, the two age system, the three age system has been with us for over 200 years. So, don't know why we got that there. We can do that. Um, this man, the, the Copenhagen Museum. So, there he is explaining with the cabinets. And uh, maybe what we could say is even though the father of, um, typology um, is in fact um, Flinders Petrie i.e. when he looks at the seriation system um, I think his predecessor has a lot to offer um, um, as opposed to seriation with Flinders Petrie in regards to the three age system and I'd like to I'd like to mention a little bit about this this character the only person thinking about this at that that's your second so jessica you're taking over for two minutes okay okay Go that's fine there. that's fine um hang on a minute if, if i carl's screen's still sharing so i'll just put a photo of me, me image of me right now um i hope everyone can hear me um well as well um I think this is an interesting period. It's obviously something that I was introduced to uh, quite a young age when I was going to archaeology camera classes. And um, obviously it's not something that I've looked into in a great detail, but it is something that I have had interest in. And even just looking at um, certain people that I know um, in the field um, around about my age or a little bit older, um, I definitely see how Carl's sort of opinions have slowly moved on to um, the younger generation of academics as well. And I like this whole idea of um, just being human um, rather than just uh, focusing on just saying, oh, that's a ritual or anything like that, just looking at the human aspect of the prehistory as well, which I absolutely love. And um, it even just reminds me of how this human aspect is not just in the prehistory, but um, some archaeologists take that in themselves. Um, I saw a Fred online. Um, she's a, an archaeologist who's worked um, a lot in the, the eastern part of the world. And she said that when she was excavating remains um, of someone from the prehistoric period, um, they always used to, she always used to sing to them or talk to them because that was her way of respecting them. Um, and just, I just think that human aspect is in every stage of the archeology. span It's not just the history as well. And I like that um, sort of thought about it as well, because it's also respecting uh, the individuals. And you definitely see how there's this conversation of um, 
people wanting to not just put remains in boxes and just forgetting about them. People actually want to uh, bury them back up again with them um, and also ensuring that we know that we've been there and how far we've actually dug down in. And um, that's the one thing that I look at in terms of the art of the prehistoric periods as well. Um, what does the art tell us? And a lot of people could look at the art and think that it was very basic um, and it's not like today. But I think when you look at it that way, you're missing the point. I think the prehistoric period um, is more advanced than what we actually take credit for in popular culture. And so looking at um, what's left behind, we can try and piece together a better image. And I think the art is a way to go. I think the art in my eyes is also a way of documenting things. We always need to document things. Um, and Carl gave a very good example of this. If, um, if you had a field of 20 sheep over there and another field of 10 sheep and maybe a field of six sheep here, and then you want to keep track of who gave you all those sheep, um, you're going to put a mark possibly in a stone to document that to say, so you can find a way because they didn't have pieces of paper. They didn't have their phone like we do today. I think uh, we take those things uh, for granted. Um, and I think it's just a, a good angle to look at that. And I, my one way of looking at archaeology is that nothing is on the off the table I don't really like to go for one theory and say that's exactly what it is I like to look at everything and try and have a discussion and a debate because some of the things that people come out with are absolutely fantastic and it's just the way people's minds work it just helps you really try and get as close as you can to the period and I even say to Carl um, when you see recreations of ind individuals in the past um, it it brings back that human aspect as well. Um, you look at them as humans rather than just bones. And I think this is definitely going to be an interesting one. I like the fact that Carl's going in a chronological aspect so we don't get confused and we know where we're going. Um, but just looking at that period and trying to, um, I think what we're trying to do this year really is try and get people out of that um, idea of, and I know a lot of people here won't have that view, but this idea of the prehistoric period being backwards and always looking at those stereotypical images. I think we're trying to uh, break through and have a different perspective and a different discussion. Um, and just looking at the things that we have all ahead of us, um, I can't wait, especially with Star Car, because a lot of evidence has come forward in terms of that. Um, oh, Carl's back, but um, a lot of discussion in terms of that that we have access to, and I can't wait to actually discuss that. And I found since last year that these discussions have really brought a lot of opinionated views, um, really interesting discussions as well. And I can't wait to see what really comes out of this year as well in terms of all of this as well. So back to Carl. Um, he's back again. Yeah, well, well, the thing is, the thing is, Jessica, I, I had a, I had a bit of a grey hair. I had to, um, you know, <laughs> Kathy told me about this, right? That uh, if you get a black marker, right, you can you can get into it with a and you can colour them. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> I used to do that with highlighters when I was in school. Pink hair. Oh, it's good, isn't it? It's good. It's good. It's good. Can I just ask you what your what your original colour hair is? Um, it's a blondy colour. And my natural hair is slowly coming through, but it's more dark than nowadays. Um, when I dye my hair, it goes quite close to black, doesn't it? So you I've not dyed my hair for a while. You, you do have this following on the internet with, with people referring to you as being hot. Um, <laughs> uh, what, what was that? What was that? The hot cake of archaeology, Cymru? <laughs> Who said this now? <laughs> I, I did, but it sounded better. Right, okay. No, thank you, Carl. Uh, it, 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 it was, it was that. Um, it, you, you, I've uh, got me into. Yeah, that individual. It. Um, when we did our live class, um, commented on the live chat on YouTube, didn't yeah, they? That's right. That's Saying right. that um, chess is fit. <laughs> Just thought. Yep. Uh, yeah. That Oh, well, and actually, actually, people now believe that you and I are an item. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's, on that photo, yeah. that was not the intention. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's it's out there. Sorry, Jess, it's it's uh, it's 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 there. Um, Sorry, Josh. Oh, by the way, by the way, hi, Jess. Jess is over there. <laughs> right. So, okay, let let let's just crack crack on with the three age system. Um, and what what were you telling people then as well? I I didn't get any of that because I wasn't here. 
just having a look at my opinion on all of this and just the, my summary. And I think that art is just a, another way of looking at the periods that allows us to see a human aspect. And just I even said looking at this as humans rather than just looking at this as prehistoric mm-hmm. people who are backwards. Mm-hmm. Um, I even said that the process yeah. of the archaeology, um, there's a lot of new academics and archaeologists um, quite recently, there's a thread. Um, there's one woman. She said that when she was excavating prehistoric human remains in yep. the eastern part of the world, she was talking and singing to the bones as she was digging them up because she oh. saw them as humans and that she wanted to give them the respect. And and because there's people oh. who aren't alive that remember them now, and so she's there to actually um, provide that. And I think that the process of this archaeology, this human aspect, is not just in the history. It moves on to the evaluation. In the investigation as well. Mm. Do, do, do you know? Do you know? Uh, sorry about the banter, folks, but this is all really relevant stuff. I, I um, do you know? Two two points with that, and I'm gonna have to crack on then. Two points with that is that um, you know, we 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 this thing about looking at everything in the past as art. Uh, everything, not not just ritual. Everything in the past is seen as art. You know, a figures found is art, right? We've got to look at the human aspect. Very, very important. I like that. The other thing, as well, as I've mentioned to you, and I've that this is when I was looking at the art and art and excavation pictures. Everything was glued. Everything was glued together when it came out the mm. ground. Everything was complete. There was no trays of little artifacts. And one thing, when I am excavating on on sites over here now is that we'll, we'll, we will be gluing everything together in situ, right? We, we Obviously, um, that's the way it needs to be. It used to be the argument that you need to put things into fines trays to have them analysed and nobody ever looks at the fines trays and it's all broken up and it all moves all over the place. Um, I don't see why there's... Um, as, as long as you can dry out the artefacts in situ and, 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 and then give them a, a brief old um, brush along the um, grain, grain there where they join together, just get the artefacts put together straight away. And that's another sign of respect than just, mm. you know, you know what people say, you're, oh, Jessica, you're interested in a load of old bones in the ground. Well, no, these are complete bones. You're interested in loads of old broken pots. They're not broken, are they, mm. when they come off the ground? Those types of things. And actually that, t- that leads us nicely into Tom and Son, where we're going to actually look now. So, um, I've cut you dead there, am I, Jess? Sorry. No, it's fine. I think it just allows us to connect as well to the period, and that might be another way of looking at it that we can possibly get more knowledge and understanding. I also said that I didn't like pushing things off the table, that um, any discussion is, is welcome with me, and that I don't really like to stick with one discussion and say that is it, because things can change as well. Um, we, 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 we don't have the ultimate knowledge um, we're still learning ourselves as advanced as we are in technology um, we're still quite early in our understanding true yeah I, I keep referring to him as Tomlinson um, Thompson Christian Thomason um, but you know you know you just mentioned something there and I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture if, if most people missed this I mentioned about um, von Daniken and I mentioned about um, Hancock with, with their ideas about earlier civilizations that have been scrubbed out by glaciation. Um, if we if we want to if we want to go down that avenue and think, all oh, right, you know, there were early um, civilizations and they were wiped out and all the evidence is gone, right? There's a little bit of a fact in that most of the evidence from earlier civilizations is gone, right? What, however advanced they were and what advancements are to be seen, um, and what, what we've got to do, we've got to have a very pragmatic a- approach to archaeology. And in fact, when we look at the cave archaeology, the cave archaeology is only um, is, is only part of the archaeology. But it's the only part of the archaeology in most respects of uh, Paleolithic archaeology that we've got. Maybe things were a little bit more advanced out there in the landscape. Maybe there were roundhouses before we know. Maybe there were... Uh, rectangular um, houses that we find at Hoik or, uh, or things like um, Star Car a lot earlier, but all that evidence is gone because you're not going to put a building inside a cave. However, Jessica, there is evidence of buildings um, and divisions being placed into caves in an earlier context. Very good point there. So I just want to mention the um, Christian Tom- Thomson um, aspect of, of what we've started off with today and obviously give you that sense of uh, content as well. So 
the the one the one thing that the one thing that we've we've already said is that um, Thompson was was hit upon a moment in time, and it was said how and the other thing as well is you you've mentioned as well Jessica you've mentioned about talking to artifacts let's let the artifacts speak to us as well, and and one thing that uh, Christian Thompson was saying that in many respects and I will go with this that you know I. I tantalizingly said that there may have been writing in some parts of history which are classed as prehistory. Um, and, and actually, that's right, because when you look at the Minoan civilization, that's classed as a prehistoric civilization. But we've got linear A and linear B, two writing systems. So how can they be prehistoric? And then other people say actually prehistory means that they weren't using iron or oh, stop changing the boundaries, woke people. Uh, but what what Tomlinson was doing with with the lack of science was basically allowing the artifacts to speak, but without writing. I think I think that's a really that's that's a really powerful thing to say. We don't have much evidence of writing, so, but allowing these artifacts to speak at us. Thompson, Christian Thompson, uh, Danish archaeologist, Copenhagen for the Royal Museum of Nordic Antiquities. He was the curator for 40 years between 1825 and 1865. And he was a curator when the museum was finally opened properly. He was devising this system from 1816 to 1825. It must have been quite, quite a work to do. Um, quite, he, he, was, he was hitting a, a new aspect. He was hitting at the new science of ethnog ethnology. Ethnology where we start to see um, where we start to see developments of uh, cultural forms of humanity in, in their pottery, in, their, um, in, in, in the way their bodies are forming, uh, in, in, in wooden artifacts, in every, the way everything's going. And in many regards, um, even, even chucking in there things like bog bodies and so on. So that's really, really good. The, the other thing as well is we've, we've mentioned, we've mentioned um, Christian Thompson and, uh, and, and we mentioned uh, the other stuff like Paleolithic, Metholithic, Neolithic. John Lubbock in 1865 was saying, we've got to have a division now um, in the Stone Age. We, we just can't have a Stone Age. We, we, the Stone Age is just a vast period. Even people in 1865 were, were, were starting to say that the Earth is older than 4,000 years old. It, it's tens of thousands of years old, then it makes into millions of years old. So what we've got to do in those thousands, tens of thousands of years old, we've got to chuck a Paleolithic in there, we've got to chuck a Neolithic, Mesolithic in there, we've got to chuck a Neolithic in there. But, but there, there, was so, there was still resistance. There was still resistance to understanding the framework of archaeology in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Did 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 people in North America have a civilization be, before 1700? All these questions were being asked. Um, are Aboriginals um, just backwards people who should be chained up and, and shot uh, at random in 1865? Or do they actually have a real civilization? Um, is there such thing as real slavery? All those questions were actually being asked. And now we've got all the answers that we are a civilized world. We have got differences in period. The earth is a lot older. Uh, people in, um, people in um, North America and the likes of Aboriginal Australia um, are far, far, far more advanced than people ever dreamed of in 1865. And we've got to go to South Africa and we've got to look at Great Zimbabwe map and Wagi to realise that there are civilizations that have a right to the land well before the white westerner so all those things are starting to develop against this backdrop archaeology becoming scientific and in fact i've gone off into another tangent i've got to avoid this but i'm going to put it in there uh, um kato thompson when she was working at the um at, at the likes of um um great zimbabwe when she was excavating a female archaeologist she was starting to realize that um um that the, the, the old ways of looking at the past uh, have to be challenged. There is a past that is a more Western uh, than meets the eye. And you can't get any more um, Western um, than Great Zimbabwe, greater than being Western, origins of people in various different parts of the world. And trying to put all that into some sense goes back to our prehistory that we're looking at today. So 
what I need to do now, I need to look at look at another image. So I'm just going to chuck this up on the screen. And this is that division point that I wanted to look at. So let's do a bit of screen sharing. Go for it. Uh, right, right, here we go. Screen share. Love it. Do you know, I'm using the, the iPhone technology rather than um, this is why my presentations are, are very different. Um, so here we go. There. Wow. Doggerland. We love it. Uh, you know, I love dogging. Doggerland itself is a wonderful landscape of rich archaeology, a lost archaeology. This landscape between Europe and Britain was inundated between 8,500 years and 8,000 years ago. And the link between Europe was lost. Um, and in many ways, this map is a little bit more inaccurate than a map I will show you when we actually do look at the pre-Doggerland landscape, that rich valleyed um, landscape with rivers, settlements, farming, mammoth, things that go bump in the night and huge statues of Lloyd George. It's all there within the Doggerland landscape before um, 8,500 years ago. And one thing that's missing is the land bridge between the likes of Ireland. We know that there was a land bridge of some kind with Ireland that was inundated possibly around seven and a half to 7,000 years ago. That's not there. That's not there, but there was, there, there was something. Um, and obviously good old Boris will join the two lands up um, sooner or later with a land bridge between Ireland and the United Kingdom. But it was linked at one stage. Um, and this is the benchmark. This is the divider. This is the end of the world. And the reason why it's the end of the world um, is because from that moment, 8,500 years ago, we British people start to have an in, innate fear of the sea. Um, it's the sea that's taken us away from Europe. Cut the politics now. It's the, the sea that's taken us away from Europe. It's the sea that's taken us away from our relatives in Europe. It's the sea that's taken us away from um, having... Um, having a landscape that's um, that's more diverse than it is today. We're, we're going to not have those herds of oryx coming over. We're not going to have uh, what, what herds are left of the mammoths coming over. We're not going to have any of these things anymore. We're going to be isolated. So we're going to have to make do in Britain um, after 8,500 years ago. So most mammalia that's here will be all that we've got. And the hunting grounds of lots of that mammalia are going to change as well. So they're not going to have that sort of um, they're going to be trapped here. This is why our wolves become extinct um, in by about the 1700s. Our bears become extinct by about the 1600s because there was nowhere for them to go. That this was just the island. Um, so, so that's 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 that boundary. And this is why this period, this change, this this revolutionary change between the Mesolithic and the Neolithic period. If you look at your books, for example, and I need to have a chat with Jessica at the end. At the end, maybe. Um, maybe thinking about bringing back James Dyer books. So there is a textbook out there that we could use. There's a lot that's out of date in there, but there's a lot that's going to be really relevant. And we, we could probably uh, get the James Dyer books back on board and, and um, you know, we, we can get a load off the internet uh, used ones and it, it'll just be pennies for everybody anyway. So we might actually bring a textbook in there. With, so it, it might actually help us understand this prehistoric period with a few illustrations, not that we're going to agree with all of it. Um, and again, we're now into a new period, um, say 8,000 years ago, 6,000 years BC. It's a new period. It's a new Neolithic. It's a new enlightened period. Uh, one thing I will say straight away is in this Mesolithic period beyond 8,000 years ago, we've got buildings of hype. We've got Scarabray, not Scarabray, damn me. Um, Star car, two different sites. Scarabray is Neolithic site. Um, and and the, 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 the point is, is that we've got a slow evolution of pottery. We've, we've, got, we've got types of pottery um, evolving in the Mesolithic period. Uh, we've got earlier forms of monuments evolving in the Mesolithic period, and we've got agriculture, animal husbandry in the Mesolithic period. And this is all to do with Doggerland and these, this wave of influence coming over, this wave of influence, not massive waves of people, but waves of influence coming over. And this, so that's really, really important to remember. Um, so, but we do have small influxes of people, as with the article that you mentioned earlier on, um, throughout the years, but... These are smaller influxes of people. Um, 
and everything that's going to make Britain has already happened by about 8,000 years ago. So that's the point. And I will stick by that statement. So, again, moving off that and what we've got here, uh, we can get rid of that. We can get rid of that and we can go there and we can move along there. There it is. Um, and what we've got here um, is it's, it, it uses, it says farming reaches Europe by about, um, by about 7,000 years ago. I'm, I'm saying farming has already reached Europe by about 8,000 years ago, but give or take a few hundred years there. So that's really, really important. Islands like the Hebridean Islands and undoubtedly the Orkney Islands have already got established populations before they're cut off from the mainland about 7,000 years ago. So that's really, really important. But the interesting thing is, is that nevertheless, we've mentioned about um, little bits of influence from Europe over thousands of years, and that sort of becomes a crescendo of influence from Europe over thousands of years. We've also got Europe influence from those islands such as Orkney heading down south. So we've got an influence of influence going up north and down south. So this is all really, really important stuff. Um, and again, uh, we start to see a little, uh, we, we, we've already got sheep here, we've already got cattle here, we've already got aurochs. Or and I'm obviously disagreeing with some of the text that, that, that's there about 6,000 years ago. But in the main, what we do have is, is a more of a crescendo building from around 6,000 years ago, properly now in, in the heart, um, in, in, the, in the middle of our Neolithic period. So um, 8,000, uh, 6,000 6, years ago, we're, we're, we're in the heart of our, um, our wonderful uh, Neolithic period. And, and then, then, what we, then what we do see uh, what we do see is something else. And what the something else is, is if we go with this other image, we've got these things starting to, to happen. Around um, six and a half thousand, six thousand years ago, more six, six and a half thousand years ago, we've got these types of sites, which are causewayed enclosures. I really love causewayed enclosures. There's a massive story to tell about causewayed enclosures. Uh, that some archaeologists go with causewayed enclosures as great meeting places. I go with causeway enclosures as places where we would revere our ancestors as we would farm the fields within this great landscape. And some of those that do my Wednesdays will be well aware of causeway enclosure sites before we get to causeway enclosure sites with you guys. Uh, and one thing that I would say, one thing I would say quite excitedly um, is that in the Mesolithic period is a period of, of, soil is a period of earth um, in the south mainly um, because populations in the north are, are quite more limited um, and then what we then find around um, 7,000 uh, years ago as we're getting really really into uh, our Neolithic period as we're getting really really into our Neolithic period um, what we do see um, is that there's 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 slowly a little bit more of a preference to to stone so by the time you get to here which we're all very very familiar with by the time we get to stonehenge uh, we've got this likes of stonehenge really well adapted really well advanced right by around um um by you know the stones are starting to move moved in the albury holes and all the rest of it all that type of stuff uh, Stonehenge proper is Stonehenge proper about um, four and a half thousand years ago. Then we've got a little bit of time and we get into uh, the Bronze Age. But this is a period. What happens? What happens in the Neolithic period um, um, as as causeway enclosures um, are being developed, uh, particularly with the likes of Orkney, uh, particularly um, as a stone gets more and more popular around six thousand five and a half thousand years ago. Uh, you get great monuments being built out of stone. And there's, there's so much, there's so many sites constructed out of stone that we could look at in this period. Um, we're, we're not going to really look at the likes of Stanton Drew. We will do half a class on Stonehenge and half a class on Avebury. But what we will do a full class on is something 
called Silbury Hill. We will do endless classes uh, on sites in Cornwall, endless course, classes on sites in the Hebrides, and we will introduce not just Orkney a lot more, but we will introduce Shetland. Now, where have we got now? We, we've, um, we're still in my introduction, and the same thing has happened on Tuesday. I've spent so much time looking at the Paleolithic period, a lot of time in the Mesolithic period. I've not mentioned as much as I want to do on the Neolithic period. Let's chuck into the Bronze Age quickly. The Bronze Age period itself, 4,100 years ago. Um, if you want to use that as a start, we've done a little bit of the copper stuff before that, the copper sort of beaker period, if you want to call it that. So 4,100 years ago, what's happening? Well, it's bronze, isn't it? It's bronze. Overnight, no. Overnight, everyone doesn't have a Bronze Age act. It, the, the Bronze Age is 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 a slow determiner. Um, it's it's a it's a, a bronze axis to cut fell down trees, a lot more efficient um, than uh, a lot more efficient um, technology for plowing and cutting down trees than previous technology. You might say that a, a, a bronze axe, axe is going to get blunt and quicker than a stone axe. Uh, but if you're if you've got a constant supply of bronze axes, you can you can certainly fell a tree. Um, and so so we look at all that. So the Bronze Age, we we got new technology. We we've got we've got new pottery that's heated at a higher temperature. New pottery that's been high, heated at a higher temperature, so the pots don't explode when you put them on the fire um, or or used for for heating uh, food. So you've got a new period. Um, you've got the new sense of settlements in the Bronze Age. You've got barley coming over from Europe. You've got this new, this new sense of perspective, this new sense of looking at the world. And there's another new sense of looking at the world. There's a catastrophic event that occurs. And I always use this. And this is, this is one of my failings, but I am obsessed with this date. 1,628 years BC, 3,000 um, 628 years ago, or give or take, um, um, actually, it's a bit, a bit more than that. But, but uh, 1,628 years BC, that's an event that is a natural event. We, up until that point, have changed Britain. We, we have, well, actually, no, we haven't. We, did, we didn't cause Dogland to happen, right? But other than that, we, we, have, we have determined Britain. It's been our little playground from, from 8,500 years ago. We have been playing around with the landscape, Jessica. We have been there. We've done it. Um, but something happens with that date, uh, 1,628 years BC. It's the, it's the eruption of Thera. Um, and it's said that for five years in the um, northern hemisphere and towards Asia Minor, um, crops fail to grow. There's a big black cloud for five years, right? That means that all those are planned areas that have been uh, felled of trees. The, um, the agricultural land is inert. Um, all the rich soils in the upland areas of the Breckens, uh, Pembrokeshire, um, the likes of the Fells, Scotland, um, um, Cornwall, Snowdonia, you name it. They haven't, they haven't been looked after. So all the remaining rich soils are washed into the valleys. Uh, for the first time, we can clearly see that there's an event in human history in Britain that we cannot reverse without major infrastructure to change it. Uh, those are planned areas and, and, and never rewooded and never reforested. In most areas, they're abandoned forever. It's only human in intervention. Now, for example, when I drive over uh, the Bracken Beacons, it's the most ugliest barren, um, endless, horrible landscape that I, that I ever witness uh, once a week. Uh, and I always think if you're going to plant trees, plant trees across all this again. Let's bring humanity back. So it's the first, it, it, it's the moment that we are responsible for the decimation of what we've created. We, we are the guiding hands of God that decimated the landscape. This is what we see in that date. We cannot reverse things. We can reverse them now with our technology, but we haven't been able to reverse them up until now. So that's something that scars the Bronze Age. And it also scars the Bronze Age in population. Up until that point, uh, the population of Britain is somewhere in the region of one and a half to two million people. The population declines things decline we can't farm land 
that there's no soil to farm. It's all rocky landscapes. You know, we, 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 we've got a problem. The population declines. But with after a few de- after a few generations, what we do, we, we move into about a thousand years ago. Um, I, I, I've just ended up go. I've just ended up going into um, about three about. 3,000 years ago, 1,000 years BC, 3,000 years ago, uh, we, we see new, new waves of industry coming over, new pottery, um, some more people coming into our population, changing our blood pool a little bit, a bit more. Uh, we've always been cosmopolitan with, with, with small ways of people coming over. And then we get into the Iron Age, about 750 years uh, BC, new technology, iron. And then the buildings of... An ex- an explosion of population. If, if the Romans hadn't have invaded when they did, if the Romans never have invaded, the population of Britain would have probably got to uh, its Roman level of 7 million by probably about 400 years of AD anyway. Uh, the, the, the maximum population of Britain can support is 7 million people. We're on 70 now. So if, if for example, all our technology started to fail, most of us would die. Um, so... Uh, we, we see that the maximum of human population in Britain is about 7 million people. Um, and that would have made it into the Iron Age. And into the Iron Age does come the beast, the beast of Orkney, where we start to see um, the, the Iron Age having very strange buildings in the likes of Orkney, like Bruchs, um, stone-built structures, technology that is completely isolated and more mega and more massive than anywhere in Britain. And it happens to be on these isolated islands off the north of Scotland. And then as a conclusion, AD 43, AD 39, BC 56, 55 and 54. That's when we see Roman influence. I would like to say everything changes. I would like to say prehistory Prehistory no longer is the effect in Britain. But I'm very wary that that's not the way things are anymore. The Romans do influence Britain and they change Britain, but not everywhere. There are cells of people in Orkney, the Hebrides, northern, northern Wales, and in fact, even southern parts of England that remain in a prehistoric lifestyle, remain in a British lifestyle, just touched and gradually influenced by the Romans over time. And that's where we'll end today. Strange enough, it's one o'clock. Um, and I know Jessica will be back with you in Lantwit next week. We'll be doing Boxgrove next week. Um, and no doubt, I know Jessica's got a few holidays coming up this year that um, legally I've got to give her. Um, so there'll be a... Sorry, Jessica, I just thought I'd have a go at you. Um, we, we will be... Um, you, you will see me later on in the year. I, I would like to say to everybody, now's the time, if you've got anyone interested in coming along to the classes, uh, get them along. We need to rebuild the classes after um, after two years. Um um, we, we need to get that back. And what I'd like to say, if anyone would like a copy of the James Dyer book, I'm going to discuss that with Jessica if it'd be the appropriate thing. But if we can get James Dyer books, we'll see if we can get them off. Um, we'll see if we can get them off, off Amazon dirt cheap. Um, and there'll be a good guide. The, the, the one thing that I agree with is the, is the, is the dating system in the books. So that'd be good. Nice illustrations. So when we're looking at um, the likes of um, Scarra Bray, um, when we're looking at um, Star Car, they'll, they'll be in front of you. So that'll be a good thing. Um, actually, I'm going to call it a day now. And um, I'm going to g- go over to um, go over to uh, the people, um, the plebs. And um, talking about the plebs, let's do you, Jess. Uh, Jess, uh, do you know what? I think, to be honest with you, it'd be good you had the textbook when you first came along with us, didn't you? So I think... Yeah, I think it'd be quite good to actually look at um to uh, also look back on the understanding and the development of understanding as well. Um, yeah. Because I think that's always important. I did that with uh, medieval uh, history. I looked back at the archaeology and how it was uh, developed and really changed his opinion over the years I think it's very useful to look at that I think yeah it'd be good to get the books and I'll have a look if we can get them somewhere for dirt cheap 
Well, well, trying to get a fiver out of Karen is going to be really difficult, isn't it? But we'll give her a go. Uh, that'll be the challenge. If you can get a fiver out of Karen for a book, and uh, Jim, Jim will probably uh, steal one from the museum. Oh, should I say that notion? Uh, anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to, for, for a change, um, we're going to ask um, our guests and the dog. Look, I haven't got bald with you. <laughs> He's, he's, it's one red, wet, okay? So I can't get bored. And do you know what I should do one day is get Nikki the sheep into the caravan and show you where she's lovely. Yes, please. Do, 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 oh, oh, maybe my, 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 aunt, my, my class is used to. And uh, Jane, um, J Jane's still with us out there. So she's still, uh, hopefully you, you, you guys know, I, I will see her soon. She's moving to Cardiff. So she said to say hello. Um, maybe one day what I'll do is go out into the field and I will give the class amongst the sheep. Um, yeah. Because uh, Goff is used to me uh, doing the class in the goat shed and wandering up the road as well whilst I'm in a BT van and a cup of tea. So that's fine. So if you haven't got anything else to say, just stay at the end. We'll have a quick chat. Anything uh, yeah. the, the gang in Lantwick would like to say now? Come on, you witch, Karen. No, she's not saying anything. No, I think they're on mute again. Oh, come on. I haven't got all day. Too much Christmas pudding. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? Right, right. okay then. Come on, talk, Lantern Major, please. Kathy oh. says a bronze axe would have been much too soft to chop down a tree. Uh, they carried on using stone. This, this, is, this is the argument, isn't it? And, and, and Kathy, I, I will, we can enter into that discussion, but that is, that is the thing. As this new technology roves across the landscape, they're attempting to use the bronze axes. Uh, some archaeologists say you can fell down a tree with a bronze axe, but the other thing as well is if you're gonna, if you're used to using a flint axe, why would you change the technology, Kathy? So Kathy could be very right in most of those respects. So we're not going to disagree. We're going to agree, and that goes in with everything I've said. You've got what you, you've got. You've got an axe. Why, you, why don't you continue to use it? it it's the same. It's a, It's the same as. Um, gas guzzling cars today um some of us are going to be reluctant to use electrical cars because we don't trust the technology and that's going to be we've had electric cars for a few years now but most of us haven't converted yet but i think that is the point kathy you're really right we're, we're going to agree on that we're not going to beg to disagree we're going to actually agree on what you've just said because that ties in with everything that we've done today i'm glad we've done that one anything else that we'd like to uh, say from uh, lantern <laughs> Uh, the, the only thing is, Jess, if you, you when you come to the um, hall next week, bring an extra jumper with you because the, the heating's not working. It's been blooming freezing here. OK, that's fine. I'll wrap up. <laughs> exactly. I will. Uh, right. OK, okay. If, if you guys if you guys want uh, archaeology company to invest in a little um, gas fire, you know, those little cheap and nasty ones for uh, no an electric one. We, we'll, we'll think about that. Uh, and and all, all, also. Also, what are your thoughts in Lantwit about uh, us looking into these textbooks? Is that be a good idea? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, is Karen the one who's typed with her money saying yes? Okay, <laughs> we sold it. I did it, Jess, not you. <laughs> Anyone else want to say anything in Lantwit before we do the two other bits of questions? No, we're all right. No, we're fine. Thank you very much. Oh, well, by the way, Chris Arnold, thanks for your top that you bought me. Was it referring to me or Jim? I can't hear the words you say, actually. Thanks for the top people. Oh, all right, no problem. Was Who was it referring to, me or Jim? Who was it referring to, him or Jim? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, you probably. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Thank I you. I say uh, that because I know the exams are coming up soon, you know, I want to know your good side. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Fair, fair, fair enough. Okay, many thanks for that. So if nobody else has got anything to say um, in Lantwick Major, it's been great um, having you on board today. I really appreciated that. Thanks for your support. Um, what we're going to do finally is, um, Goff, anything you'd like to say, darling, and we'll have a word of wisdom from Henry, our French student. No, nothing from me. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Good. And, and Jim's been well behaved today as well, uh, Goff, mm -hmm. even though he's a right... Anyway, um, Henry, anything you'd like to say? I didn't say a word, okay? I didn't say <laughs> Henry, go on. No, uh, really enjoyable. Um, an awful lot to take on board there. And um, actually giving a different perspective to just looking at a sign on a building and saying, that's what's here. And actually understanding the environment a bit more. 
can I, can I, can I, yes, can I just say one thing on the back of that? Um, when me and um, when me and Kathy used to wander around fields together, hand in hand, looking at our <laughs> um, we, we 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 used to, well, well, there were other people along her boyfriend Bill, but that's something else. Uh, but when when we used to when we used to go to these sites, I used to look at a Northern Survey map and I said I used to sit down. And I used to say we're going to go to this site on a Friday. So we go to the site on a Friday. I wouldn't do any research or anything, and we'd turn up at these sites and we'd be looking at the the sites. Either I've got it right, or either it's a new interpretation. And sometimes when you go to a castle, I, the, the challenge is, is, is the next time you go to somewhere like Raglan Castle, don't buy a guidebook. Just look around and you'll learn a lot more than looking mm. at the signs. Looking at the ground. I think this, is, this would be the way to go. Yeah. I don't know what happened then. Are you still there? Yeah, we're still here. I think you've uh, run out of money in your meter. <laughs> oh, no, no, that was actually somebody phoning in. <laughs> the tax man. It, it, was a, it was a tax man, yeah, it was yeah. Lloyd's Bank. You, a, anyway, so uh, anything you'd like to... You. Um, Henry, um, cap this off today and we'll call it a day. So, no, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you next week. It'll just be me, you, Goff and Jane. Oh, by oh. the way... Uh, you'll have to, you guys will have to get Ellen back. Um, Jessica's gonna love that. So, on that note, I really appreciated everybody's support today. It, 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 I, I really appreciate everybody's support. So, I'm gonna say goodbye to we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, I do believe if I can remember, goodbye. I, I'm gonna read everybody out in Lantwit to make sure, uh. Because otherwise, Jessica can't even remember your name. So, Jessica, write this down. Um, I'll see you. I'll see you soon, Jim, Chris, Arnold, Kathy, Keith, Andrea, Andrea, Karen, the witch, uh, lovely Lynn, uh, Stephen, um, and we will um, we will see you all soon. Jessica will be seeing you next week. Thank you very much. And I'm going to say goodbye to Goff and Henry. And it's been great. I really enjoyed this session today. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Come on, Jessica. I've got to say goodbye for me, and you've got to say goodbye for me. Go on. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Bye, Jess. Bye, Jess. Well, what did you want me to do, Carl? You've got to say goodbye from me and goodbye from him. Go on. Buy from me and can buy from him. Ah. What? It was a two Ronnie. Oh, you're too young, Jess, to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a two Ronnies. And, and, well, they've and they gone abruptly. To, and they used to be Barbara Cartland. They used to dress up as a man, a, a man, and, and all the characters used to have to dress up in women's dresses, and they used to be whipped by Barbara Cartland. <laughs> Sounds funny. entertaining, actually. It, it, it was. I think we should do that with Claire. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't. Oh, oh, do you know what? Somebody said, somebody said that they, um, that, that, that one of my, um, one of my videos, um, I think the, the, one of the ones I did, they, they, uh, oh, they, they, they didn't like the introduction because me and, uh, got, uh, me and, me and, oh uh, God, Roger were having the, um, we're having the banter. So, uh, anyway, still being recorded. So I, I, but I would say that the Jane Dyer books would be a good idea. If we can look them up on Amazon, yeah. if we can get them. If we could get a uh, a load, and then I don't know, we'll 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 obviously we'll, we'll you know if everyone wants to pay a couple of quid, and that could go into funds or whatever. But I think we can get them for about five six quid each. Yeah, yeah, that that'd be good. Is it the ancient Britain one, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the ancient Britain yeah. by James Dyer. If, I tell you, if you want to look at that, and if you if you oh actually actually well I'm gonna look at it myself. Let's let's have a good old look now. We may, we may as well. Come get it now. Hang on. Uh, I'm gonna go on Amazon. Oh, you're going on Amazon. All right, okay, that's fine. It'd probably be, well, depending on what people want, whether they don't mind a pre-used one, oh, well, um, it could be doing. cheaper than uh, five, six pounds. You never know. No, I think the postage is going to be three quid. Oh, yeah. I forgot the, about the, the postage. postage. The I always postage. forget about postage. The postage will be three quid anyway, because that's that's the standard. Uh, so, anyway, James Dyer, oh, my God. Um Oh no, we, we must have bought all stocks. Oh no. Oh, there isn't any on here at all. I'll, I'll have a quick look on eBay. Oh my god, Jessica, we, we must have we, you know when we were doing the classes back years ago. Yeah. 
we, we actually did buy all all the ones offline at one point, and there, there isn't actually any on you. Oh, no one else would have any uh, leftover, would they? If it from the past, I'm sure someone. Yeah, but hang on, it's going to be one. We, you know, we, if we want to issue everybody with bloody books. Oh. Um. Do, do you know why don't we just go with uh, Neil Oliver's book? Uh, Britain begins. All oh, right, you got. Oh the... no, hang on. I mean, I've just found um, on Amazon here. Um, it is here, but the unfortunate thing about it is not as cheap as what we thought it was going to be. Yeah, no, I found it as well. It's it, it's on here. It's thirty. It's thirty quid each. Yeah, and for a hardcover, it's one hundred and thirty-one. Oh Christ! Oh, do you know what? Well, oh, okay, we're gonna have to relook at this one. Oh God! For a bit of a spanner in the work, we can still reference it, but it is going for like about um a uh, hundred here. It must have been put out of print, and now is uh one of those hard to come by books. Yeah, a bit like mine. Um, if worse comes to worse, I can also um. See if I can get hold of it online, free, and possibly send it to people in the class. And maybe if they can, it'd be sort of in a way that they could have a look at it while on their phone in the class. And I could also have a book with me for anyone who doesn't have a book. Well, I just got to type, I just, I just type it into your ancient Britain onto uh, ancient Britain, um, James Dyer. Because I could have a look on, hang on, I'll have a look on that website where I use to download books. Oh, um, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. James Dyer. Um, there is one copy. There are copies on eBay. Oh, eBay. Yes. eBay's quite good. There, there, there are Actually, there's loads of copies on eBay. And uh, I'll, I'll, ju I'll just show you it now. Hang on a minute. Let, let's screen. There are loads of copies on eBay. We'll go with eBay. I found it online as well um, to be downloaded. So worst comes to worst is that um, digital version as well. I've got hold of it that way. Brilliant. Right, there you go. There's loads of them. 283, buy it now. Free oh, postage. perfect. Uh, there's loads of them. Oh, that's perfect. Love it. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Right, all right, Dan. Yeah, we can. Uh, we don't have a problem. The best thing to do when you turn up next week, find out who wants to buy one, and we'll. Uh, it'll be a fiver. Yeah, no, that's fine, Carl. That's perfect. Uh, we'll sort that. And like I said, worst comes to worst, always got the uh, digital one that I can Good. get hold of. Uh, this is this is still being recorded, so I'm going to say that if anyone's listening from Pretend, like Anne, you, um, you're going to have to sort Pretend out now. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um. Yeah, no, that's all good, Carl. I think he's uh, going well today, um, despite good. the awful weather. And the dog's been swaddled up to me all, all morning. Look, she's tired and she's cold. Oh, my God. Right, OK, then. <laughs> she's not happy, Carl. It's, it's like having a baby. My mum said it's pathetic. I said, how is that from a wolf? It's not. <laughs> it's not. And the border collie, he just likes having a cutch next to you. But this one just likes being treated like a baby. But other than that, it'll be all great for today. I think uh, we'll have a good discussion um, in Bridgend because I know Bill likes getting involved in all things like this. So it uh, be nice to see what Bridgend comes up with now. Oh. Always like seeing the way the opinion changes after every class. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, not a problem. All right, then. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, actually, what I'm going to do, right? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know the one thing in in the chat boxes, right? Because we 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 lose that. Um, yeah. Oh, no, no, I, right, I've yeah, written St Mary's right. down. Um, uh, not St Mary's, Slot Beach down. Um, in my diary anyway. But I just thought to is to get myself out and about more, and I think it, it would also benefit archaeology coming to document something like this and just keep a little, uh, you know, bunch of documents and reports together. The Slot. The Splot Beach Project, excellent. Yeah, no, that's fine, perfect. Okay, then, brilliant. All right, then we'll uh, uh, we will we we will let you be now, and uh, um, best of luck with this afternoon. Any problems, let me know. Yeah, um, am I logging in as you? Uh, yeah, logging in as me. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's perfect, Carl. I'll speak to you soon. 
I, I actually, actually, uh, actually, I could, I could set her up this afternoon and just let. I tell you what, I'll set her up. It's only an hour away anyway. Okay, Carl. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Let me log in. I'll speak to you then. Take care, Jessica. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 Thank you very much for watching. This is a live stream. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is our main archaeology coming classes. Got chocolate there. A bit bad. Need to shave. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, join. Join. It's uh, £1.99 a month, uh, but that's to sort of get the extra content online. Anyway, thank you very much.